Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game is very exciting, not just because I got to record in person, but also because I have my Orvar deck all sleeved up with my mythic frames. As such, I keep an Abimoy Changeling, Trait Doctoring, Archeomancer, Two Islands, Sapphire Medallion, and Cyclonic Rift. Nick is playing Cosima, keeping Three Islands, Distortion Strike, Muldrifter, Leyline of Anticipation, and a Solemn Simulacrum. Max is playing Octavia, keeping Three Islands as well, Castle Vantress, Factor Fiction, Cyclonic Rift, and a Ponder. Martin is playing Livio and Thrasios, keeping Eldrazi Displacer, Plains, Fiend Hunter, Arid Mesa, Regal Behemoth, Cultivate, and Misty Rainforest. Nick wins the die roll, and before starting his own turn, has a pregame effect putting on his ley line. Nick takes the first turn because getting the first permanent wasn't enough, and he plays an island and passes to me. I also play an island and pass to Martin. Martin plays a Misty Rainforest, losing one and cracking it to go and find a breeding pool. Max plays an island and casts Ponder, rearranging his top three and then drawing one. Nick plays an island and passes. I play an island as well and cast a Sapphire Medallion. Martin plays an Arid Mesa for his land for turn, and cracks it losing one to find a Tundra. He's then able to cast Thrasios, and passes to Max. Max plays a Myriad Landscape, which comes in tapped, and passes. At the end of Max's turn, Nick flashes out the vehicle side of his commander, the Omen Keel. On Nick's turn, he starts by playing an Island. He then evokes a Muldrifter, and with the Sacrifice trigger on the stack, taps it to crew his commander. He then sacrifices it, and draws two, and then moves to combat. He swings at me, and I have no choice but to take the hit. I then exile my top three cards. He hits Reliquary Tower, Swarm Yard, and Mystic Confluence. With nothing else, Nick passes. I untap, and play a Ghost Quarter. I cast a Meboid Changeling, and then play a Relic of Progenitus. Martin plays a Plains, and casts Cultivate, going into his library to find an island and a forest, and puts the forest into play tapped. Max plays an island, and passes turn. Nick plays a reliquary tower from his exile pile, and casts Solemn Simulacrum, going to find another island. He then crews up the Omen Keel, and this time swings at Max. He exiles three off of Max's library, hitting two more lands and a windfall, and with nothing else, he passes. I untap, but have no land to play. I'm still able to cast Orvar the All Form, and I pass to Martin. Martin plays a Path of Ancestry, and passes to Max who cracks his landscape at the end of turn to go and find two more islands. Max's turn has him playing Castle Vantress, and passing. Nick's turn has him playing an island from Exile, and he crews up the Omen Keel once more. He moves to combat, and swings at me. I block with the Immune Boy Changeling, and with nothing else, Nick passes. I cast Trait Doctoring and target an island, which makes a token copy of it because of Orvar. I cipher the spell into Orvar, and then go to combat, swinging my commander at Nick. Nick flashes out an Arbor of the Ideal, and before moving to blocks, I use Cyclonic Rift to bounce it back to Nick's hand. Nick then takes the hit, and I get to cast a Cipher Trait Doctoring and target the island again to make another token copy of it. I then pass to Martin, who activates Thrasios at the end of turn. He scries a card, bottoms it, and reveals a Reclamation Sage which he gets to draw. 
Martin untaps and plays an island. He taps 3 to cast Kadama's Reach because Martin loves to ramp. He finds two basics and puts one to field tapped, and then casts a Fiend Hunter and targets Orvar with the Exile. It happens, and with nothing else, Martin passes to Max. Max takes this opportunity to cast Factor Fiction, choosing me to make two separate piles. I put Ancient Tomb and Looter Ill Core into one, and an island, Thieving Skydiver, and Thalico's Scout into the other. Max takes the pile of three, and then moves to his turn. Max untaps, and plays an island. He casts the Thieving Skydiver kicked, and as it comes in, steals my Sapphire Medallion. He then casts a Thalico's Scout, and passes to Nick. Nick plays a Swarm Yard from Exile, and casts a Skilled Animator. As it enters, he targets the Omen Keel with it, and Nick is able to have his commander become in the form of a 5-5 with all of its abilities, and doesn't need to be crewed at all. Nick then moves to combat, and goes at me with the Omen Keel, who hits for 5 this time, and exiles 5 off the top of my library. With nothing else, Nick passes. My turn has me untapping, drawing, and just passing. Martin plays a land and casts Regal Behemoth, becoming the Monarch. With his now extra mana, he casts a Farhaven Elf, and as it enters, goes to find a basic. He then passes, drawing from Monarch at the end of turn. Max plays an island and plays out a deranged assistant. He swings at Martin with his shadow creature and takes the Monarch from him. He then passes, drawing at the end of turn. Also at the end of turn, Nick flashes in the Weatherlight and we find out that this is basically a mono-blue vehicle deck. Nick plays Castle Vantress from Exile, and casts Distortion Strike, targeting Omen Keel, giving it plus one plus zero, and unblockable. He swings it yet again at me, and deals six, and exiles another six cards. Since he's got Flash anyway, Nick just passes. My turn has me drawing and then casting Sword of the Anime, and I pass back to Martin. Martin untaps and swings the Regal Behemoth at Max. Max takes the hit, and once more, and Martin regains his crown. Having the extra mana again, he casts a Coiling Oracle and reveals Rhystic Study off the top. He then casts the study and uses Path to Exile on the Thalicos Scout, which Max responds to by bouncing it to hand. Martin then casts a Reclamation Sage, and as it comes in, targets the Omen Keel, which resolves. He ends his turn, and then passes, drawing from the Monarch Trigger. Max untaps and recasts the Scout, paying for the study cost, and then passes. At the end of turn, Nick flashes out the Arbiter of Ideal, paying for the Rhystic Study, and he taps it to crew the Weatherlight. With Nick untapping the Arbiter of Ideals, he gets a trigger from it, and he takes the opportunity to crew up his Weatherlight, then resolves the trigger, putting an Archetype of Imagination into play for free, which would become an enchantment creature, but it already is, so that doesn't change much. Distortion Strike then resolves from Rebound, which has Nick paying the 1, and he targets the Weatherlight. He then swings 9 at Martin, but before blocks can be declared, Martin activates Thrasios and hits a land. He activates Thrasios again, hitting another land, and then does it a third time, and this time reveals Morai's Wake and draws it. With no blocks, Nick then flashes out Omen Keel, and Martin takes 9 and exiles his top 5 cards. Nick also has the Weatherlight trigger, and he looks at his top 5, and Nick reveals Sky Sovereign, console flagship, put into hand. I untap, and play a land. I then cast Archaeomancer, and as it comes in, I get to put Cyclonic Rift back to hand, but don't pay the 1, and Martin draws, and I pass the turn. Martin untaps, and plays a land. He pays 1 green for Concordant Crossroads, and then follows up with Livio. He moves to combat, swinging the Behemoth at Nick. Nick flashes out Thassa, God of the Sea, which Martin promptly counterspells. In response, 
Max overloads Cyclonic Rift, but doesn't pay for the study cost. Before the Rift resolves, Martin exiles the Reclamation Sage and Regal Behemoth Livio, and then uses his second ability to bring them back, becoming the Monarch again. With the Rift still on the stack, I crack the Relic of Regenitus and exile all graveyards and draw a card. We then resolve the rift with Max's opponents returning all non-land permanents to their hand. Martin then recasts the Concordant Crossroads and moves to discard down to hand size. Max plays an island and finally casts his commander. He moves to combat and is able to swing all out because of the Concordant Crossroads on the field at Martin. Martin takes the hit and Max takes Monarch and Max then passes drawn at the end of turn. Nick untaps and recasts his commander the Omen Keel. He animates it again with a skilled animator and then moves to combat. The Omen Keel goes at me once more, hitting me for 5 and exiling my top 5, while the animator goes at max to take the Monarch. Nick then ends his turn, drawing from being the Monarch and shipping it to me. I untap and cast Unish, Cryosphinx Sovereign in my main phase. I choose Max to split the top four cards into two piles, and Max puts them as Island, Riptide Laboratory, and an Island and Merfolk Sovereign. And then move to combat and swing the Sphinx at Max, and then pass, discarding down to Hand's Eyes. Martin untaps and draws, casting Karmic Guide in his main phase. He brings back the Regal Behemoth, which he discarded earlier, and becomes the Monarch once more. With his extra mana, he's then able to easily cast Marari's Wake, which gives him even more mana, and he casts Sky Shroud Claim. Martin goes and finds two forests, shocking one into play, and then casts a Coiling Oracle. He reveals Eldamri's Call, which he then casts after he puts it to hand to find a Green Warden of Marasa. He then casts the Green Warden to return Sakashima's protege to hand. He then casts the protege and cascades into an Eternal Witness, which comes into play, and this has him putting Kadama of the East Tree to hand. The protege then becomes a copy of the Karmic Guide, which enters, and he puts the Great Whale back into play from the graveyard. This has Martin untapping seven lands, and he then casts Kadama. Martin then recasts Livio which completes his extremely convoluted combo for infinite mana and infinite card draw. He's able to do so by exiling the Great Whale, Sakashima's Protégé, Coiling Oracle, and Eternal Witness. And then activates Livio's second ability, returning the creatures to the battlefield. He has the Protégé become a copy of Livio, and has the Great Whale netting him some mana, and the Eternal Witness returns the original Livio to hand. This will allow Martin to draw his entire deck and generate infinite mana. He reveals that he's able to venture any spells and basically hit everyone's permanence, and is then able to make infinite copies of Ulmold Hydra by flickering it with the Bramble Sovereign that he's about to cast into play. With his entire board having haste, the table realizes they're done for and scoops it up, and we move on to the next one. I always hate resleeving decks, but considering how cool my deck looked with the Mythic Frames, I'm happy I did. And remember, if you participated in the Kickstarter, make sure you spend the credits and vote with them, or if you want to add things to your orders, Pre-orders should now be open. Game review time. So I think the MVP of this game, for me at least, was probably Cosima slash the Omen Keel. I was so blown away with how consistent Nick's deck worked, and when it connected, my goodness did it give him a lot of value. Not only can it potentially exile key cards, like it did in my case, which was Mind Over Matter and Izami, but it also basically guaranteed him land drops. Beautifully done, I love the deck. I will say that I kind of wish I got to do more with my Orvar deck, I also wish I got to see more of Max's deck. Octavia is kind of a weird commander, and I'm always down to see more of those kind of things hitting the field and doing cool stuff. But, unfortunately, it seemed like all he was able to do was ramp out some creatures and steal some stuff. Speaking of Martin's deck, he actually didn't build it with combo in mind, it just kind of happened and worked out really well in that case. I will say that any kind of combo that involves 5 plus cards is a-okay with me to win the game, and this was a fun way to finish it off. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. 
so I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.